Hello, you know, sometimes it's fun to see how the history repeats itself and everything is going in circles. Uh, exactly one year ago, also on the rainy autumn day, actually evening, I was filming a review for the Aston Kern flagship SP-1000 or Ultima. And uh, that, uh, as I've said at that uh, time, it was my uh, Christmas present. But of course it was a present that I have to pay for and I bought it for myself. Uh, you know, the best present is the one that you make uh, to yourself. But uh, one year later we are repeating this story and uh, this time I can't resist uh, because Aston Kern uh, released an updated version of Ultima, they simply named it uh, SP2000, but actually price remains the same, so basically no, it's not a new flagship model, it's just of uh, second version, probably it's more uh, correct to say. They didn't change much, bit updated design uh, and uh, they changed digital to analog converter chips, because here they using the most recent, uh, the most powerful and the, the best uh, chip uh, AK4499, actually two of them. And also they changed the amplification part, because now it's uh, more powerful. SP1000 uh, delivered about 2 volts RMS from single ended output and 4 volts RMS from balanced output. And this one can do 3 volts and 4 volts RMS, so, sorry, 6 volts RMS from balanced out. So, basically, it's uh, not a huge update in terms of specifications. Also, of course, they've in uh, increased a little bit. Uh, signal to noise ratio channel separation and all that figures but they already was uh, they already were behind the human uh, audible limit and uh, i could make this uh, review probably short like go see my last year review of uh, ultima and now let's have a closer look and now I, in few words i will tell you the difference but of course it will be a, a dull way to making reviews and uh, i don't have and other plans for this uh, evening anyway, so this review I'll try to make uh, as detailed as possible, so if you need some particular part there will be timestamps in the description, so you can jump to the necessary part, and uh, price is still $3,500, yes, I also think that it's uh, unbelievable, but anyway, I do a big compression and uh, I've paid for an upgrade. Of course I will sell my SP-1000, uh, but uh, anyway, I decided that I will do an upgrade, but I will probably tell about it a bit later and now let's have a closer look. So package is multi-layered, as usual you need to spend some time unwrapping your new precious uh, goods. So as you can see outer box is made of cardboard, it's covered with, uh, it's sealed with uh, plastic wrap. And as usual, inside you will have a wooden box. So, nice level of luxury, looks really attractive. Here, predictably, we will have a leather case. Actually, there is a label informing us about that. You know, I really like when something is predictable. If the box is labeled leather case, you will have leather case. Also, short quick start guide. Not sure if I will need it. So, few set of protective films, as you can see, separate films for the upper side of uh, dub and for the back panel, for the front panel, actually, you will understand it better when I will show you the design. And actually, a K4499 
case with separate warranty card. Nice vegetable tent leather. Brown color. Actually you will have brown for the copper version and uh, for stainless steel version, if I remember right, it will be green. So, of course, here you will have player itself. USB cable, actually, surprisingly, but this cable is without uh, fabric, fabric coating, just regular rubber one. And a few packages of the humidifier silicone gel. So, as you can see, accessory set is normal, but for this price range, probably we can expect something really super but not this time but let's have some pleasant moment if this design looks familiar to you you are right uh, Aston Kern decided uh, not to change much from the last version of their flagship so while it's still here as you can see size is almost the same same design, same lines, so not much difference. But uh, there are some details that changed. So here they used just regular spring loading micro SD slot, while here they used tray like no connector for the amplifier. Actually, they released amplifier for the SP1000, uh, but decided that they won't do that in future. And same USB-C, it also can be used for charging to access the internal memory, to use it as digital tonal converter, so all that functions uh, that we can expect from the modern DAP. Speaking about charging, actually battery life here reduced. Battery here is bigger, but uh, two really power consuming digital tonal converters and more powerful amplifier took its toll, so now uh, it uh, it's, you will have only about 8 hours of work, while this one could give you up to 12 hours. So if you are an owner of SP1000, you can, uh, you can probably not hurry with the updates. If, you, if battery life is important for you, but of course who cares about battery life, all we need is sound. Patterns are a bit different, I'm not sure which which is the best one. As you can see also they've changed a little bit the shape of bevels, so just a bit different approach to the design. On the upper side no micro SD slot, just two outputs and this side looks familiar, but uh, edges are a bit more sharper and actually volume control and uh, uh, volume control knob uh, looks a bit more like uh, crown at the expensive watch so as you can see a bit different uh, texture but not much changed and back panel here will be, here is solid copper and just small uh, plastic triangle because they had to put antennas here and this one had uh, carbon on the back panel probably carbon looks a bit uh, better but I'm not sure cop I also like copper and uh, new version is a bit even heavier than old one front panel is almost completely occupied by screen so this isn't the bright maximum brightness, so here is maximum brightness. Of course it's bright, it has good viewing angles, nice resolution, it's 5 inch screen, uh, I don't remember exact figures about resolution, if I remember right it's 720p, so it's not uh, 1080p, but still it's ok for the digital audio player, but of course we've got an example how to fit the big screen into smaller body and actually weight 
is also noticeably smaller. But anyway, of course it's copper and it's not fair to compare it with aluminium. There are two versions as usual, copper one and stainless steel. I prefer copper, I like this material, I'm a fan of copper. But as you can see with my old SP1000, there are some uh, traces of aging, there, there is some patina traces, so as you can see it's uh, became, uh, it, it's showing some traces of age, but I think it looks pretty nice. If so, if you if you are not a fan of uh, degrading uh, the outlook of your precious gadget, probably better consider stainless steel version. But anyway, of course it's not really pocketable device. Let me show it to you in the inside of case, fitting really tightly. So buttons for tracks navigation, USB-C for charging, as you can see no access to micro SD slot, volume control is freely available. So let's try how the swipes are working. Not really well, but it's a common issue for the all Astel and Kern cases. If I remember right, yeah, you can just press and hold. Not swipe, but press and hold and it will show you this, this drop down, but still it requires some usage. Anyway, in terms of design it's great as always build of premium materials, looks stylish, feels really solid. I'm sure that it's not your everyday carry device, not something that you will uh, carry in your jeans pocket or even in jacket pocket, but still it's Aston Kern and it looks stylish and it's great for some listening sessions when you're sitting on your balcony looking at the sea and uh, when you are I don't know, spending time on the on your yacht, uh, but the only thing that I couldn't under, that I can't understand it's why they didn't apply these uh, films on the factory. I had to spend time gluing one, two, three, four films. Actually, this time I managed to do it better than with regular Ultima, but still, I'm not. I don't know. You are getting three point five thousand dollars up why they pay this 50 cents to some indonesian worker that uh, glue these uh, films or maybe not indonesian maybe china Mala malaysia not sure maybe they think that everyone who are spending so many uh, so much money on this dub uh, has separate uh, has a dedicated person for films gluing, maybe your butler can do that for you, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's the way of motivating the buyers, like, okay, I'm not a 100% lost man, at least I can glue the films, who knows. Firmware doesn't bring any innovations too. Maybe some UX restyling would be nice to see in the newer version. But currently Aston Kern shares their code base among all their models and uh, I think because of that uh, actually use user experience and feature set is almost uh, equal. Their firmwares are based on some Android version, I'm not sure which one, because they don't uh, share this information. In some reviews Android 6 was mentioned, but you won't see any under pieces of Android here, because everything is covered with custom launcher, so no traces of Android, basically, with one minor exception. When you boot up the device, you will see this uh, now playing screen, it looks really good, big album cover. You can tap it and see it's even bigger and if lyrics is present it will be listed here, but no lyrics for Miles Davis of course. So it's navigate back, add to playlist, uh, additional information about the track if you need it, play order and shuffle. Also it's current uh, playlist, now playing you can change it if you need. Track navigation buttons, so it's pretty expected. 
Also, there is a slide down menu with quick settings Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gay plus equalizer settings and some additional tweaks. Also, you can change brightness here. But of course, almost everything is hidden in the menu. So, here is search. Really good search, implemented really well. And that's why I like uh, players with sensor screen, because search is really convenient. So you just type few letters, you will have artists, uh, albums and all tracks. If you need to expand this list, you just tap uh, and you, you will have the full list of that. But here is media library. All songs list, so all the huge media library. Actually, another thing that Aston Kern changed, they doubled the built-in flash memory. So, this one has uh, five, uh, half terabyte of built-in memory. I think it's a really good innovation. So, almost basically the, my whole media, all media library fit here. Album list, so here it is. Separate button for queue list. You can change between different view styles. Probably default one is the best one. Of course, mass editing is present here. Artists, genre, playlists, folder browser if you need uh, to browse by folders. MQS it's for high resolution music, CD library it's for those who use Aston Kern CD Reaper and services, it's actually the traces of Android here. So you can install some APKs on this device, just a small whitelist, but in this whitelist you will have Tidal, Deezer, QOB, QOBuzz or how it should pronounce correctly, Spotify, so basically almost all popular streaming media providers you can use with it, but you, you'll have to download APKs manually using services like APK Pure and install it manually too. But anyway, it's working. So at least it's a good thing. And settings. Lot of them actually, but all are grouped really logically. Wi-Fi, it's, I'm not sure is there any sense in showing it, but actually you turn on Wi-Fi select the proper network and connect it so but also you can test network connection here bluetooth so also pretty familiar actually it's not supporting ldac or other codecs so only aptx hd aston kern connect it's a really convenient thing that allows you to remotely control this player or to control something with this player remotely equalizer so you can uh, turn it on, add some preset. So there is regular equalizer or you can use a parametric equalizer. Basically select frequency then change the gain and get nice visual representation of your changes if you need so parametric equalizer is a good thing to have always so gay plus playback line out left right balance playback settings it's order and how new songs should be added uh, to the now playing list actually Aston current dubs has have the most granular control in this area Notification panel, you can tweak the toggles on this uh, drop-down panel if you need. CD Reaper, USB mode, media transfer protocol or digital tonal converter. So yeah, it uses media transfer trans, uh, media transfer protocol or transport protocol, not sure about the correct version. So for to use it with your MacBook or any other Mac OS, you'll need to install Android file transfer or use uh, some third party file manager. So USB audio format, uh, SPDIF conversion, car mode, actually 
nice thing if you are driving so you can get bigger version of the interface probably it's it could be convenient in some cases screen brightness date and time device name language input method timer settings so it's sleep timer and power off timer downloads firmware update system information and reset so firmware is stable it's mature everything is working smoothly pretty good user experience so basically is what you can expect from the top of the line player and actually compared with all other flagships so basically there are three models so KN8 and Lutu Po Gold Touch and Aston Current Apps actually it's the only one that has streaming for the, so if you need streaming for three thousand five hundred dollars it's the only option and of course about the sound so let's have some in-air monitors on the table well IMR R2 maybe not the most expensive and most top of the line model in my collection but I like their sound so much that I will use them in this premiere video so basically the best dub and my most favorite in-air monitor so probably let's uh, it could be named this way and in terms of sound you know I can almost repeat everything that I've said about the regular or oh, okay. regular is not the correct version previous version of Ultima so it's natural 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 organic really engaging with Aston Kern signature uh, coloration but uh, at the same time there, there is a difference uh, I'm not sure about the difference between the copper and stainless steel version because for the SP1000 I've did A-B tests in the shop. I have I had about two hours uh, the blind testing and switching the dubs backwards and forwards. So I didn't found uh, I didn't find any difference between stainless steel and copper versions as well as uh, three my friends that were participating in this uh, comparison. Maybe for the SP2000 there will be some changes in sound but uh, honestly I doubt about that. I think that it's just a matter of your preference in materials but anyway I've got copper one and I will describe it. And uh, I, probably it's unavoidable that I will make some references to the SP1000. So basically, uh, even sound description will be based on the SP1 will be based on the SP1000 comparisons. So base here is really agile. It's deep. It's powerful. And you know, uh, increased power of the amplifier really did a good job so it's more powerful and it's better controlling bass especially on the planar magnetic headphones so if you have some full-size cans some planars this one will fit them much better of course things like uh, i don't know he6 by hi-fi man or abyss will still require an amplification but models like Ananda or I don't know HE560 by Hi-Fi Man will be a good pairing for it so it's more powerful more agile in uh, pumping the low frequencies of course it has great resolution uh, perfect attacks and decays really lifelike but uh, compared with SP1000 this one has a bit more weight put into the low frequencies you know I can't say that it's adding additional weight it's just a bit more and probably I can say that it's sounding a bit more organic you know it's a fun thing that uh, when I was listening to the SP1000 I didn't uh, miss any low frequencies but, but with a bit of additional weight here well you know it's sounding more natural maybe it's kind of a new uh, new purchase bias here but I like this additional low frequencies more of course you will have great texturing uh, great attacks decays resolution great body of instruments solid foundation really good depth so basically everything that you will wish you will have it so Aston Kern really knows how to create good amplifiers and good amplifier is the number one thing for the great bass and as an example I've got uh, where is it 
So, yep, here it is. It's <laughs> to my taste, it's one of the best test tracks for the low frequencies. It's Massive Attack, uh, Mezzanine, it was remastered recently and it's uh, the remastered version. And Massive Attack, uh, especially this one particular album, is all about low frequencies. Of course, Mids and Treble here is also perfect and it's filled with a lot of, well, you know, probably innovative ideas, but anyway, Bass here is just, uh, well, I, do, I can't find another word, but I respect the low frequencies in this track, because you know, they are ubiquitous, they are everywhere, but at the same time they are not pushed forward, but they are deep uh, layered, great uh, recorded bass present in all tracks of this album and it's always present and it's building the foundation for the rest of the melody and it's done in so great and uh, masterful way that I really adore this uh, album for uh, album as a test tracks for the low frequencies and of course this player really managed to uh, represent bass as it uh, required and build the whole uh, melody on this foundation and it's sounding really engaging, really lifelike, it's fat, it's sick, but at the same time it's perfectly controlled and it stay on its place, what that is important here. Meads are almost natural, of course uh, almost zero, zero accents, but at the same time here present that uh, signature Aston Kern accent or actually not accent, Aston Kern coloration. It's hard to describe if you didn't hear this coloration, but if you heard it, you probably know what I'm speaking about, but uh, actually, usually I call this liquid meats. You know, it's, all, it's once again hard to describe with words, but uh, if I'll try to do, probably I'll say something like all notes are transitioning one into another smoothly, but at the same time they are perfectly separated. It's like like one note fluidly transition to another and it's you know it's sounding more natural more natural than in real life probably sometimes but that uh, this uh, honey coloration really engaging really smooth of course resolution is uh, great it's not mm, highlighting you know it's not focused on the micro contra contrast but resolution is superb but it's not just it's just not throwing these small details into your face imaginary stage is good it's uh, uh, it's one of the biggest, both in width and in depth, and it's even better in three-dimensional three positioning of the sources compared with SP-1000, so it's even an, a bit better in terms of layering, in, ter in terms of staging, and in terms of all that related stuff. And, as an example, I've got this track, it's... Uh, high-end society test track for this muni high-end show and i just selected it to show you that player supports mqa so mqa logo green light everything is present here it's hof ensemble polarity one of the greatest modern jazz acts you know it's a true quintessence of the nordic jazz music because it's uh, uh, it's perfection brought, brought to maximum level because it's great uh, musicians gathered together and at the same time they are technical as hell and this is recorded perfectly as hell and uh, actually it's the maximum level of quality of records well maybe not not the best ma maximum but really close to to the best record and uh, polarity is there uh, last year or previous year, I don't remember, but their second album, first one was Quiet Winter Night, I used it frequently, but Polarity is also great, and uh, it's, uh, you know, when a lot of acoustic instruments are recorded perfectly, it's, uh, it's a really tight challenge for the dub, for the any source, and uh, SP2000 passed this test with brilliant colors, of course, zero issues. 
And treble here is also close to perfection. It has maximum extension. Uh, it has perfect attacks and decays. It has that uh, layering that is required for the high-end sources. So all overtones are separated and they are saturated. So every single instrument will have its, its uh, higher harmonics. It will, it will have its uh, overtones, and uh, it's uh, the thing that all. Uh, all, almost all sources are missing. Well, of course, you know, it is the number one uh, criteria for the expensive dubs for me, because it's uh, it's, it's okay in uh, the dubs in the $1,000 range, like uh, Ibasa do it really well, uh, Kane N6 2 do it really well, and uh, QLS 361 do it even better, but at the same time only low 2 po, po gold touch and two Astel and Kern flagships do it uh, at the perfect level. Or maybe not perfect, maybe it could be even better, but at the maximum of a level that uh, could be achieved nowadays in the portable audio. So, I, I'm not speaking about things like uh, amount of treble, attacks, decays, naturalness and so on. All that stuff you will have, uh, all the technical stuff here is superb and it's that smallest nuances that uh, it's hard they are a bit hard to pinpoint them at first listen, but when you got used to this representation, it's definitely, you know, you will miss them with less expensive dubs. So just don't listen to this one if you are, uh, if you are, how to say it, if you want, if you, you once you hear, hear its sound, it's hard to go to the lower level. Well, maybe not hard, but you will definitely know notice what you are missing so and as an example for the treble I've got another really great album it's uh, echoes of Ellington Jazz Orchestra and uh, Peter Long arrangement it's Jazz Planet so it's uh, big fans of Duke Ellington gathered together and they've decided to uh, reinterpret uh, famous uh, Edgar Holst planets uh, but in the style that of uh, Duke Ellington and it's a really superb uh, album I really recommend it to you either you are a fan of jazz or you are a fan of classical music I think that you will like the fresh uh, fresh look at this uh, timeless masterpiece and it's recorded nicely performed greatly and it requires good travel because it's uh, Mars, I've selected Mars track, well, maybe it's a bit predictable, but anyway. It's uh, filled with aggressive trumpets and these trumpets going really to the high frequency domain with that overtones of brass music. So it uh, requires a good treble and only few dubs can play it at 100% and this is, one, is definitely an example of the dub that could do that. Well, so that's about the sound and uh, I've already said, uh, I already told about uh, pairing, so almost all modern headphones, earphones are okay with it, it has enough power to drive even not the most power hungry cans, but uh, those that are slightly less power hungry, but still on the hungry side. And of course it has a really good black background, even better than SP1000, so if you have sensitive in-ear monitors, it will be also a pretty good uh, thing for you. And of course about compressions, uh, unfortunately I don't have all dubs that I'd like to mention here with me, but anyway, let's uh, start. So. Ibasso DX220, you know, probably it's the closest one in terms of general representation in the up to $1,000 segment. It's also resolving, but uh, also bit musical and not uh, focused on the monitoring representation. It's pretty monitoring one, but still with a bit of added weight, a bit of added emotions to sound more engaging like uh, SP2000 is. But of course this one has uh, signature coloration and it's sounding uh, tighter on the low frequencies a bit more and uh, actually I like the boost of tightness here it's a bit more natural on the mids and uh, better in the treble layering area 
SP 1000 M it's you know it's kind of semi closer in terms of signature to SP 2000 comparing with SP 1000 but this one is more technical in almost all aspects difference is tiny but it's a bit more resolving a bit more natural but the difference is really tiny but it's still audible Lotto poor gold touch it's probably the only dub with natural signature that uh, can compete with uh, Aston Kern offerings, but it doesn't have Aston Kern signature coloration and it has a bit boosted upper mid, so it's sounding a bit more emotional, a bit more highlighting emotions, a bit more forward. And Kane N8, it's more highlighting emotions, it's uh, less uh, natural, so it's for those who like not monitoring representation, but colored, forward, engaging, so it's a different approach to the sound. And what else can we mention? Opus number two, it's still a good dub, you can get it for $800 sometimes on the sales. Of course, it's a bit outdated in terms of usability, in terms of features, but it's still nice sounding. It's not powerful comparing with modern dubs, but still pretty engaging, but this one is more natural and more resolving. But uh, opus number two is still worth mentioning here. And of course the most obvious and most interesting comparison is SP-1000. They are really close, let's be honest. Difference isn't huge, It's uh, I can probably call it minor, but still you know it's present. When I did A-B tests I've decided that I like this one more, so a bit added tightness on the lows, a bit more added weight on the lows, a bit better staging and a bit better treble layering and separation. So, not many changes, but it's still uh, still audible and I decided to make an upgrade. So, if you already own SP-1000 and uh, I can say that, you know, it's not much need in selling it and paying paying thousands of dollars to make an upgrade. I recommend you to listen yourself and decide yourself. You know, I can't say that just sell this one and get this one. I recommend you to listen and to decide yourself, because when I do a comparisons, I have decided that I need an upgrade. But if you are buying a new one, I think that getting the SP2000 is worth thing to have. Despite having less uh, battery lifetime, SP2000 is, uh, is still a bit better and a bit more organic and a bit more engaging in terms of sound. So it's not an upgrade, up, upgrade it's uh, just a bit, uh, actually not restyling, I can't find a proper word, just a revamped version of the flagship, just small upgrade to move uh, move along with progress and uh, to release something new. But it was one of probably three the best dubs, or actually for me two, because I like more natural representation. And this one is noticeably... Uh, is also one of the best dubs available here, so you know, it's pretty logical not to change the things that working, just restyle them a little bit and to provide a bit more value for the new buyers. So, it was my comprehensive review of my new reference dub, Aston Kern SP2000, updated Ultima. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.